Well, hello and welcome. One of the core challenges we face as artists and creatives is building a consistent routine where marketing is concerned. So today I'm talking you through how to create your artist's marketing calendar. I should just say it's not specifically a social media calendar, it's an art marketing calendar. We are covering all areas of your marketing. Now I'm going to cover the strategies you might use, when, where and how often and towards the end of the video I'm going to walk you through a real example as well. So make sure to stay and watch right to the very end. So welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sophie and I love to help artists just like you to set up, market and grow a highly successful business doing what you love. Now if you'd like more tips and tricks on exactly how to do that, then you're in the right place. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content and consider subscribing to my channel as well. All right, are we ready to take a look at that artist's marketing calendar? Now I've got a few steps to walk you through, so if you're that person that likes to take notes, maybe just press pause and go and get yourself a notebook and pen. Okay, number one is gonna be about deciding on your core marketing strategies. Now, I like to suggest three to five main strategies to focus on, and if you haven't watched my previous video that I'll link to up here, that takes you through perhaps slightly more advanced strategies specific to what I think could be good to get into for this year, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna give you what I would call good middle of the road art marketing strategies. I've got 10 for you. I've got other videos on probably almost all of the 10. So I will make links below this video as to where you can expand your knowledge on the different um, marketing strategies that I'm going to mention. If you'd like to press pause and get that notepad and pen, then don't forget to do that as well. And you might want to write them down. So the last thing to talk about when choosing your strategies, and I've mentioned this in other videos, of course, it's going to depend on who your target audience are. Who have you chosen that you would like to buy your art or join your art workshops or buy your courses, right? It's down to you who you choose. And again, I've got my you know, fairly well-received target market video that I will link below this video. So if you're not sure who they are and where to find them, watch that video because that's gonna help you a little bit more. So you need to understand and you need to know who the target market are before you're going to make a decision off this list. So I just wanna get that sort of said right up front. So let's look at these 10. So number one, email marketing. So that for me, it's the lifeblood of your business. It's a non-negotiable art marketing strategy. So that's, that's one already ticked, right? You're going to be doing email marketing. Now the second one is blogging. Really, really great if you know that your audience likes to read and also that you like to write, right? That's what's called a win-win. So if you wanna know more about blogging, check out the links below. Number three, you're watching it YouTube. So obviously we know that at the moment a lot of video is being consumed. If you know that your audience likes instructional videos, they like to be on YouTube, then it's gonna be a good idea for you to use that as a core strategy. Podcasting, the next one. Now again, if you know that your audience is a podcast listener, they like to listen and you really like to talk. A lot of people have said, Sophie, you like to talk, you should have a podcast. But a while ago, I chose YouTube, and so we stick with YouTube. So podcasting, great if your audience like to walk around listening to podcasts. I love podcasts, so I'm definitely somebody's audience. Number five, Pinterest. Brilliant if you've got products and you've perhaps got them on a, on a shop site. Um, also, it's very good if you've got YouTube or blogs. It works really, really well. So again, I've got other videos on Pinterest if you want to dive deeper into that. Number six, Instagram, you either love it or hate it, you're either on it and using it already, or you've said, no, thank you. It's a visual platform and it's very much video driven at the moment. There will be more videos. I've got a few videos on Instagram, but I'm gonna be doing one um, pertinent to 2023 coming up soon as well. So if you don't wanna miss out on that, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Number seven is Facebook. So it's gonna again, depend on your audience. Some people still hang out a lot on Facebook. It's still a really good platform to be on. So again, if you know that your audience is of that demographic that they love to hang out on Facebook, then that's gotta be one of your core strategies. Now there are lots of different things that you can do within Facebook, the same as um, within Instagram, of course. So again, you know, more videos on diving deep into that below this one. Number eight, networking. So that's out of the digital space. I mean, you can network digitally online, but I'm talking about traditional 
face-to-face -face networking, building of your network. It's how I've built my businesses in the past, and I still find that this is a key marketing strategy right here, right now. And I did a recent video on that, and I think it's a really good strategy for artists. So check that one out here as well. And number nine, of course, is referrals. What better way of marketing than asking a customer to make a referral, leave a testimonial, leave a great review. You could also set up a referral strategy where you give people a discount code to refer to their friends, etc. And number 10, of course, PR is definitely last and 100% not least, a really good thing to be doing when you are an artist. So each one of those equally relevant. Some of those you might be thinking, oh, they're not so good for me and my audience aren't there. So you're going to make a choice three to five, where one of them is the email marketing. So go ahead and write those down um, before you watch the next bit of the video. Number two in things you need to do in order to create your marketing calendar, and that is commit to a regular routine. Now, before all of you go eh, and switch the off button, all right, it's not as bad as it sounds. And here's why having a regular routine is gonna help you with your art marketing and actually your business. It's gonna save you time could save you money, right? It's definitely gonna help you to build leads and more customers, and more customers equals more sales and more money in the bank, which I'm pretty sure is why most of you are here watching these videos, right? So that said, what does a marketing routine look like? Well, the first thing you need to do is look at those key strategies and decide how often you're going to be doing them, and then on what days, and if relevant, what time that content is going to come out. So it really is as simple as that. How often is it going to be every day, every week, every month, twice a month, twice a week? How often is it going to be? What time is it going to come out? So if it's daily, is that something you need to do in the morning, in the middle of the day, in the afternoon, in the evening? When is that going to happen? And again, just remember, when you publish content, it usually again links when your audience are around. And by the way, this is something I teach as part of my little mini training, Art Marketing 101. I teach you how to put together and you put together your very own art marketing routine planner, and you also create a marketing plan as well. So if you're interested in that, make sure to look at the details below this video. So number three, it's time to get super organized. So my suggestion is we're gonna go digital, we're gonna look for a digital organizational platform. Now, before you go, oh, I don't like the digital stuff, I like my notebook and pen, there's a lot of times a notebook and pen is just perfect. This is not one of those, all right? You need to use a bit of sort of project management type of software, but I've got a few simple suggestions for you. Okay, so as you can see, here we are on a really simple marketing calendar spreadsheet. So I've simply put dates down the side. You can alter that, whether it's day by day or just a general week overview. And then you could write, so for this week, my YouTube video is going to be this particular title. It's gonna be, my blog is going to be that color palette blog. My email is going to be talking about the blog and you could put the subject title of the email here. The three Instagram posts. So this kind of completely depends on whether you decide, okay, I'm going to make more rows down this left-hand side. You could put different rows for different days if you're going to have lots of things that are daily tasks. So you might say, okay, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you might put Monday to Friday down here. And then, for example, your YouTube just ends up on the Wednesday if you do it on a Wednesday or the Thursday. And then you could write in the different Instagram down here. If you're going to networking events of so that particular week that you're in, you could write what networking event that you aim to go to. And if you're doing PR, as another example, you might write down some PR tasks on those dates. All right. You can make this as simple or as complicated as you want to. You can do it all different colors. Um, and you can alter that. So that would be super simple. The next thing I would probably look at is perhaps making a calendar. So I typically use iCal, but it looks very complicated. So I've just set up a simple example over here in Google. And if you like to do all things Google, this might make some sense. So I've just literally made a marketing calendar, social media calendar. I've got some reminders, tasks, and just a, a plain calendar. So then what I've done is I've said, okay, on the Monday, and this is date specific. So the thing about this is you'd need to put in the dates. If you're good with spreadsheets, then you can probably do that in a slightly more advanced way. 
if you use a calendar, then you've got the actual dates that you can fill in. So all I've done is I've said, okay, Instagram story to go out at that particular time, um, Monday to Friday. I've said here on a Monday time to plan out the posts. And in this case, I've just put video because you know that I do video. And then when, and this is, this is real, this is when I tend to do it. Tuesday morning is when I shoot my video. And then if you're doing three posts, you probably roughly put out when they might happen. And then everything happens around when you publish your video or your blog or your podcast, those big items. So you publish the item, whichever one you're doing. And by the way, not every marketing strategy is going to use one of these big ones. But if you do and you have something like this, then you're going to want to make sure that all the things are happening at the same time. And then you might publish the blog the next day that links back. The email would go on the same day, for example. And then there's a networking event in there. So you can see it's pretty simple. You can tailor it completely up to you. If you don't do any social media, you'd lose the social media. You know, if you're going to do PR events, then you're going to just uh, change it that suits your business. And then the other um, bit of software that's quite nice, you can do this on a free version, is Trello. And again, you can um, use this on your phone as you can the other two, of course, easily adapt to your phone as well as your computer. And this just works really simply. You're just making a really simple um, card at the top here. And then I've just literally put, see, YouTube, emails, Instagram, Pinterest, and networking. In this particular example, I've just put across Okay, so it's really simple. I can just go add a card and then I and I can just write in the subject line, whatever that's going to be. And then if I wanted to make the second week, I would make the second week. If I wanted to make another one, I'd make another one. And then if I want to edit this, I'm going to hit the pencil and I could click open card. And then I can literally put whatever that is. I can put a description and add what I'm going to write in the email. I can do so many different things and I can do all that. I can put assign it for a date. I might say, oh, it's ready by tomorrow. Um, and I can do all of that. And then it's going to say, oh, it's, it's actually due. And I've done that for this one. So on YouTube, I've put the title of the video we're making right now. There it is. It's due tomorrow. I've also colored it for YouTube. Like there's a different ways that you can do this. You can and then you can add a second card, like I said, for the next week and the next week and so on. And then so there are lots of other software that you can use as well. So, for example, I also like to use Evernote. So I've actually got a note in my Evernote in my marketing content notebook. And I've just used a template that they've given me. And I've just changed actually this one to become a social media marketing calendar. But you can change that and go now. Actually, it's just going to be a marketing calendar. You can change the date, some weekly things that you do each week, key things that are happening this week. And then I haven't, I've just used their template. I haven't done any of that. So you could get rid of all of this. You can put literally put what you're doing, the time you're doing it. Um, you see, you could remind yourself with hashtags. You put more notes um, and things that you want to do under there. So this is a simple template literally on Evernote. And you could create a new book that is your marketing book. And then this is a note within that book. And you literally can do whatever you like with this. You can say, okay, I'm just going to get rid of all of that. You can just delete it away and just make it your own, right? This is the description that I need to write. The time is going out at 5 p.m. Like completely change it. You can press this little button and add all sorts of pretty things. If you want to really lose a lot of time in your week, <laughs> you can make it all colored. Listen, if you're visual, I get it. You want to have a little bit more color in your life. So there we have it. Some super simple ways that you can um, put together your own artist marketing calendar. So I think out of those, you should find something that works for you. Number four, now we're going to look at getting some content together because otherwise you're going to sit there thinking, well, that's great, Sophie. I've chosen my platforms and I've got myself up a spreadsheet or I'm using some software, but now what do I put in there? So let's find an easy way for you to come up with some core content. So this is something I teach in my membership and around having nine core topics. Now you might say, why nine, Sophie, and not 10? Well, that's maybe information for another day, or you'll have to send me a DM on Instagram and say, why nine topics? 
All right, so we're going to look at finding nine, what I would call high level topics, areas that you can talk about um, and you can break down into smaller topics as well. So for example, your process, your materials, your inspiration, where you work, right? These are high level topics and they can all be broken down into something smaller. So go ahead, press pause and just write down what your nine core topics could be. And then once you've done that, you could break them down a little bit. So for example, materials, you could say, okay, acrylic paints, these different colors, this brand that I like using, these particular brushes, these um, extra scrapers and mark makers, like you can fill it really out so that you've got lots and lots of ideas to talk about. Look out for another video coming shortly because it occurred to me you might quite like another video on actually how to break that down and how to come up with many, many, many more content ideas. Give me a thumbs up in the comments below this video if you would like me to make that one. How to actually expand and come up with loads of content in a really short period of time. Number five, step number five, we want to plan ahead as much as possible. Yes, this is about organization. This is about saving you time. This is about not really overthinking things as well, keeping things quite light and simple. So in terms of actual content, you probably want to think a week ahead, but in terms of higher level ideas, general topics, you might want to plan out as far as a quarter, or longer if you're that person that really likes planning. Now me, I like me a bit of planning, but I'm not into the detailed planning for months ahead because I like to be a little bit flexible. I like to respond to somebody who asks me, could you make a video about that? I look at my planner and I think, well, it wasn't in the plan, but you know what? It would fit in there quite okay. So there's an element of staying flexible, of course, as well. So let's just go ahead and look at a bit of an example that I've put together for you and I've got it here on my iPad. So for example, if we chose that, let's go back to the beginning and let's choose the key marketing strategies. So in this example, you might say, well, obviously your email, because that's the non-negotiable number one, but then you might choose blogging, Pinterest, and say Instagram, right? So now you've make, made those choices and you've made those choices based on who your target audience are and also to a level you know, what you're prepared to do, right? And hopefully you're looking for a nice win-win situation there. So your routine, your simple routine could be like this. You're gonna blog every week. You're gonna write an email every week. You're going to pin daily on Pinterest, three to five pins a day. You're gonna post three times a week on Instagram. And one of those, at least one of those is aimed to be a reel. And you're going to do daily stories on Instagram as well. So those are the simple decisions, that's it. You make the decision, you commit, you put it in the planner. So here's how that might look when we dive a little bit deeper, okay? So when we think about that blog, you perhaps have chosen one of your topics, you say, okay, I'm gonna write a blog on a new color palette that's inspired me recently. There's your blog topic, it's come from one of your high level content ideas, right? Then you're gonna write an email to your list talking a little bit about why they should read that blog and then of course a link to where they can read the blog. So you talk about before and why that's inspired you, how you found this, this color palette, what you're gonna do with the color palette. So you build out a nice email, link it across for people to look at the blog. Then you create those 25 pins based off color and inspiration. And again, it sounds like, oh my God, Sophie, I've got to make 25 pins. But we've just said there's a new color palette. That's what you're blogging about. Color palette's gonna give you lots of different colors. Pretty simple to start getting out on something like Canva and making some simple pins around that color palette. And again, maybe you things you talked about in your email. You don't wanna to have to keep coming up with new things. You wanna kind of think about repurposing. There's the blog. I'm writing the email about the blog. I'm creating the pins that have come directly from the content in the blog. All right, and now I've got three Instagram posts. One of them could be a carousel of the key pieces of the color palette and a bit about the inspiration. One of them could be a reel where you're in the studio kind of using the colors or you can come up with something creative. And one could simply be a post about the blog that you've just published. 
on your color palette inspiration. See how that all just works together? And that's one week's content made. Now, if you want to do the daily stories, you can make the stories really simply about, oh, here I am just, I'm just sitting in the cafe writing this blog. I've gone back to the studio to edit the blog. Um, you know, here's the color palette that I'm working on. Here's a couple I'm making some pins for Pinterest. Here I am doing that. Right, again, don't overthink it, keep it simple. So there you have one week's content done. How long did it take us to do? Not long. Of course, you've got to write the blog, obviously, but if that's your core marketing strategy, then you're going to allow yourself perhaps a morning in the week to get that done, right? So I hope you found that useful. I hope you've loved the content. Like I say, let me know in the comments that you found it helpful. And if you'd like me to dive a bit deeper into content creation, how to come up with more ideas, then give me the thumbs up in the comments and I will definitely do that. And as I mentioned at the beginning, if you're really into the marketing and you really want to find out a little bit more about what I talked about specific to 2023, check out the video that's on screen right now. That is the latest video prior to this one. That's the seven strategies to be looking at for this year. Dives a little bit deeper, offers something a little bit more advanced, but enjoy it. Okay. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye, everybody.